Yo, yo, yo. How's everybody doing tonight? Are we feeling good? Good? Nice. I'm Mitch, like Stas said. Um, I have a quick question for you guys. How many of you guys would say that you are hobby people? Like a hobby person? Okay, a couple hands. Hands are slowly rising like you're weirdly ashamed of that. Uh, does anybody have like an interesting or like unique hobby? Sammy? Making pens. Making pens. What does that, what does that look? Oh, yeah. That's sick. I know Jack Ridlin here is a, is a, he's a trap shooter, so he's like gunpowder and shotguns. Yeah, that's sick. Anybody else who has a cool one? What? Kendama. I don't know what that means, but I like it. Oh, the, stri the stick with the string. Heck yeah. Guys, I'm a hobby guy. What did I say? The stick with the string. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm a hobby guy. Um, I've had several hobbies throughout the years, but one that I always go back to is building things. Is anybody a, like a woodworker, like some like to build things? Not Ikea? Okay, yeah. The guys wearing boots and hats said yes. That's good. Um, I love woodworking, and, I, and it's something I've always enjoyed. Uh, here's actually a couple photos of some of the things that I've built in the couple recent years. So this is a, a conference table I made for our Sumo office. I know it looks, that's in progress. This is what it looked like at the end, but... This was, a, this was like a daunting task for me. This was a nine foot by six foot conference table, red oak, hardwood. You don't mess that up or that's a spendy bill. Uh, it turned out great. This next one's a good one. This was uh, Aaron before we got married had asked me to build a nightstand. And I'm, this was right before we started dating. And I was like, ah, you know, I'll see if I have time, pencil it in. And, but really I was like, okay, let me get after this thing. I worked for four days straight to make the sickest looking side table nightstand thing. I think it turned out pretty good, right? Thank you. Yeah, and, and guys, we got married, so obviously it worked. Um, so if you don't have the looks, guys, get into woodwork, and I promise you, it will take you places. Uh, and then lastly, this is probably the best one. Um, so I don't know if you guys know, but I lived with Matt Smith for three years, our fearless leader. Uh, and I remember the day I moved in, um, you know, this guy, you know, he's been in the workforce uh, at this point. He's a full, on, he's a full blown adult. Uh, and I, so I'm moving into the house, right? I'm carrying in uh, all my stuff and I'm like going to poke my head in his, his room, right? Well, on the floor in the corner, I see just a mattress kind of stuck in the corner, right? No box spring, no bed frame. <laughs> and there's like a, a, like a fake bear pelt on the wall. Um, and so I was like, you know, I'm like, Matt, is someone like squatting in your house? Like, is this a homeless person like setting up shop in here? Turns out Matt's just into the low profile aesthetic. Um, they don't make bed frames. West Coast. West Coast, yeah. They don't make bed frames that small. So I was like, dude, I'll build you one, okay? And so I built him basically a, a glorified pallet. But now he has a bed. Um, yeah, there's the, the bear pelt. His room doesn't look like that anymore. He's done a good job revamping it. Um, but guys, whether it's, it's building a conference table or building a bed, uh, I love building stuff. And, and when you build something, you always have to consider this idea. Is this something that is built to last? I mean, is this one structurally sound? Like, you know, is this going to last uh, for a while? Well, think about the Great Pyramids, right? Um, or, the, or the Great Wall of China. The pyramids were built... It 4,500 years ago, which is crazy. And the Great Wall of China was built 2,000 years ago. And what's insane is I can go to those sites and see these structures that look pretty much the same uh, that they did for thousands of years. But what's even crazier is, is the millions of other things that we don't think about that were built in that time period or after that have just disappeared or the structures that have, have fallen apart or uh, disintegrated or something like that. And so we have to, if we're going to build anything, we have to consider this idea, is this built to last? And so that's the idea we're going to look at in Scripture tonight. And what Jesus talks about is, is that idea of not only building things, but building our lives on things that are, la that are going to last. So it's building your life on what lasts. And so tonight I want to give us three truths from the Bible on how we can build our lives to last. So uh, if you brought your Bibles or phones, jump with me to Matthew 7. We'll be in Matthew 7, 24 through 27, which says this. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice 
is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Awesome. So some context of where we're at in Scripture right now. This is the tail end of the Sermon on the Mount, which is arguably the most famous and important sermon in all of history. This is where we get a bulk of Jesus' teaching and preaching, uh, and he's just spent a long time setting this up. And now he's wrapping up this message. And so he has to decide how he's going to wrap this thing up. And he decides to share an illustration uh, of two ways that people can respond to the things that they had learned. And in the same way that, that we're hearing that and reading that today, uh, we have two ways that we can respond to the things that God is teaching us. Two ways that we can respond to God's word uh, and the things that we know about God. And so that being said, I want to dive into our first truth for tonight. And that is that we are all builders. We are all builders. So look with me in verse 24 and 26 where it says this, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like the foolish man who built his house on sand. And so here Jesus is illustrating this point by comparing two builders, right? He's setting this up. He's got one wise, one foolish, one who builds on rock, one who builds on sand. Okay, and with this, what Jesus is trying to do is he's trying to relate that to us building our lives. And I don't know if you've ever thought about it like this, but uh, we are builders in the way that we build our lives. And if you don't think about it like that, think about it like this. Um, every decision that you make goes into making you the person that you are, right? Does that, I know that was kind of a confusing thing, but each decision that we make comes together to form who we are. So whatever we dress, whatever we eat, drink, how we spend our time, how we talk, uh, who we talk to, who we surround ourselves with, that all comes together to form who we are, right? So we are builders in the way that we build our lives. And so to examine what Jesus is talking about here in this passage, uh, I want to start not by looking at the differences between these two builders, but, but start by looking at what they have in common, right? And so here's what we know. We know that they both have the same opportunity, we know that they are both builders, and we know that they both built a house, right? Pretty cut and dry, pretty plain and simple. Uh, these guys set out to build a house, and they succeeded. But what's interesting is what Jesus doesn't say here. He doesn't say, like, oh, the, the wise builder was the better builder. He was the more skilled guy. Or he doesn't tell us, like, oh, the foolish man had, had better materials to build with. No, all we know is that these guys had the same goal, the same opportunity, and it, the same initial outcome to their story. And so uh, <clears throat> we don't actually get to see what their houses looked like. We, know, we just know that they built houses. And so it's a little open, up to, open to interpretation. Uh, and personally, I think they look like this. You know, I'm a mountain chalet guy. I don't know. Is anybody like beach house over lake house, beach house, mountain house? It's, it's, again, you guys are like shamed to raise your hand about a beach house. That's okay. Um, this is what I think that they look like. And, you know, these builders could have easily built whatever they wanted, right? They had the opportunity to build their lives however they wanted. And the same is true for us, right? Like, I can, I can become anybody I want to. We live in America, God bless, uh, and we can have a lot of freedoms and opportunities to, to build our lives how we want. And on the outside, man, we can build some pretty good-looking lives, right? We can have a great job, a good relationship. We could be financially stable. We could be popular. We could look like Sam Sulek. Whatever, yeah, whatever fits for you guys, maybe that's just in my head. Um, but again, what's important is what we don't, what Jesus doesn't say here. Jesus is not telling us what these guys' houses looked like. In the same way that we, it's not about what our lives can look like on the outside. He doesn't give the square footage of the house or the number of rooms, because that's not what's important, right? But what he does emphasize here is the foundation. He emphasizes the foundation because the foundation is the key. And that is the key to understanding this passage that we're in right now. The, the wise builder builds his on the rock, while the foolish builder builds his on the sand. So I love in Luke, uh, it's another gospel that tells the same story in a different account. Uh, it says this about the same passage. 
a wise man building a house dug deep and laid the foundation on rock. Whereas the foolish man who built his house on a ground without a foundation. So ultimately the wise builder was the one who put in the effort, dug down deep, uh, and ended up building on the solid rock. Whereas the foolish builder, man, that guy just slapped it up wherever he could. And he didn't even consider the foundation at all. <clears throat> and, and so we see that that is like what it looks like to build on sand. Now, this is a sand dune. Has anybody been to like the, the great sand dunes or seen one of these things in person? Okay, that's a good amount of people. I've not, but I sure as heck researched a good amount about it. So you're going to hear some fun facts about sand dunes. Um, one fact about sand dunes is they can get upwards of 800 feet high, which is wild, right? Some people are like, no, that's not true. I look for, for example, look at this. These are camels crossing over this sand dune. So this thing is massive, right? Another fun fact, make sure you write these down, uh, is that sand dunes can move 8 to 12 feet across the floor or the desert within a calendar year. So something like that can shift like 12 feet that way in the course of a year. So your entire college, time in college, an 800-foot sand dune could go like a city block, which is nuts. So basically, you don't want to build on a sand dune, right? You don't want to build on the foundation of sand. It just wouldn't work. It doesn't make sense, right? Sand is so temporary. It's so shifting. It's not solid. It's not, it's not sturdy. And so Jesus is not dumb, and he's not calling the people listening dumb either. He knows what this means to the people that are listening to this story. And again, it's like us, right? None of us would choose to build on a bad foundation. And if you would, I would love to talk to you and understand why. But none of us would choose to build on a bad foundation. And so the real mistake, guys, is not choosing to build on a bad foundation, but it's neglecting to think of your foundation at all. Right? I'm going to say that again. It's not choosing to build on a bad foundation, but it's, it's neglecting to build on a foundation at all, or to think about our foundation at all. And so when we build our lives on sand, we are making the core purpose of our life all of these temporary things of the world. Right? We're, we're putting all of our purpose, all of our weight on the temporary things around us. And so what does that look like? You know, for us in college, I think it could look like this. It could look like success in school. You know, if I, if I get the good grades, then, then I've succeeded. My value's in that. It could be in our image. You know, am I getting the, enough likes and follows uh, for the stuff I'm putting out on Instagram? Am I popular among my friends, friend group? Am I constantly in a relationship? Is, it, is, it, is that where I'm finding fulfillment from other people by having someone that, that is my, my girlfriend or my boyfriend? Or just in general, are we finding it in the success of our life? So ultimately, guys, we're building on sand when we put so much of our weight, on, uh, so much of the weight of our house or our lives onto the temporary things of the world. We need to be wise and build our life on the things that last. And so that's the first point. The first truth that we learn from this passage is that we are all builders. The second point that we learn from this passage is that we are all going to face storms. We will all face storms. So in this parable, we see that, that both the wise and foolish builder face the same storms, right? They, they, they face the same exact conditions. It says, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against those houses. Now put yourself back in, in 33 AD, right? Put yourself as the people who are listening to Jesus say these things. You may be a little shepherd boy, just tending your flock. And then this guy just starts talking. Picture yourself as that. 2,000 years ago, there's no electricity, no technology. You're living in a place that looks something like this. This is like a, an example of a home from back in that time. There's not any crazy technology like we have today. No Amazon Prime. You have to wait a long time for the camels to deliver your, your package. And your entire life is kind of wrapped up in this like several mile radius. You know, it's legit like living in Lawton, Iowa in the middle of nowhere. Your entire life is just in this, this like small vicinity. And so back in that day, man, there's not much that could come in and just decimate you, right? There's no nukes, no bombs, no air raids. And so the ultimate force of that time period was a storm. Right? And we still see that today, right? It's, a, it's a, something we have little control over, tsunamis and hurricanes and tornadoes. And we see that the power that storms have even today against all this modern technology. And so Jesus is saying, 
that the, the storms come into our lives and they, they attack and, and um, bur- like bombard the houses. And he says that for a reason here. He says that because the reality is, guys, when storms come, they reveal the foundation that we've built on. When storms can come into our life, they reveal the foundation that we have built on. And so these builders might have had these insane-looking houses. They might have had uh, the best-looking house. Their life might have looked great. But ultimately, all we know is, is the outcome of it, right? Who had the better foundation? That's all that matters. And the same is true for us, guys. We're going to face storms in our life. And Jesus actually promises us this. I know that sounds bleak, but it's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when we face the storms. I, I go to John 16, where it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. So we will face trouble, but if we're believers and we trust in God, we, we know that we have peace because God has overcome those hard things. And when we live in light of the gospel, live in light of our faith, it changes the way we view those hard things, right? When we have the solid foundation of Christ, it changes the way those hard things impact our life. And so I want you to think for a second, what do these storms look like? What, is it, what does it look like to have a storm come uh, and test your foundation? You know, is it, is it losing a loved one? Is it a loss? Or is it a bad breakup? Is it anxiety? Is it failing a class? Honestly, it can be any of those things. It can be big or small. What it comes down to, guys, is a storm is something that, it's a hard thing that we have in our life that just shakes up our way of living, right? It's something that shakes up our life, a trial, like Billings talked about last week. I'll never forget the morning of September 20th, 2019. I got probably the worst phone call that I could ever receive. Um, I was a senior in college, and I had learned that a fraternity brother who I pledged with, who I lived in the house with, was one of my close friends, had taken his life the night before. It was hands down the most confused and upset and angry and just, ah, I don't even know, just emotional I had ever been. And at that point, I'd been following God for one year. Uh, and it was a big turning point for me. So much of me wanted to go back to the way that I was living, go and cope with that hard thing the way that I always had. Going to the ways of the world, the temporary things, the sand. But thankfully, and, and, and I'm, I'm so thankful that I had people in my life that were helping me walk with God, helping me lay that foundation on solid rock because I was able to go to God and go to the Word and see what His answers were to these hard things that I was experiencing. And not only did God help me in that time, but He actually strengthened my faith. That experience made me stronger. And it allowed me to trust God in a way that I could have never done before had it not happened. And even more than that, guys, I was able to to be used by God for the people around me. I had an entire fraternity that did not know God. And I was able to be a light for them in that, to be there to comfort them when they were building on that sand. And so I just want to make it clear, guys, you know, maybe you can relate to that. Maybe you've had hard things. And if not, guys, we will have hard things. And just because we're living on a solid foundation, just because those of us who have trusted in Christ are building on that foundation, it doesn't make the storms hit any less. Like, it doesn't say that the wise builder had less of a storm. We are going to feel that pain. We are going to feel the hard things. We are going to feel the hurt and the trauma that comes with that. But do hear this, guys. When we trust in Christ and we have that solid foundation, it absolutely changes the way we endure those hard things, the way that we come out, and the way that we live our lives. And so I don't want to sit here and and claim to know what some of your guys' hardships have been um, because I, I know that I haven't experienced the worst of the worst, but know that Jesus can relate to that. And because of that, guys, we have to build on the things that last. So that's the second truth is that we are all going to face storms and we have to build our lives on the things that last. Water my mustache, sorry, let's bring it up. Um, Guys, the the third truth that we hear and see from this passage is this. We must build our lives on Jesus. This one's an obvious one, but it's got to be said. We have to build our lives on Jesus. It is is the way to to have that peace, to have that um, that structure, that solidity. We have to build our lives on Jesus. 
So as we've seen, the, the difference between these two builders is their foundation, right? The, the foolish builder's house ultimately collapsed, and the wise stood firm. And so we have to be like the wise builder and start building on that solid foundation. But guys, it, what's awesome is, is the Bible is so cohesive. It teaches us what this looks like. It's not just this isolated passage that talks about Jesus being the foundation of our life. This is something we see all throughout Scripture. And I love uh, 1 Corinthians, which says this, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. And so when we look to build our lives on a solid foundation, we have to go to God. There's literally no other option. Everything else is just going to be building on sand. And we might find that like some of those things last a little bit longer than others. Like we might have... Uh, a little bit less of an impact from a storm and we can hang on until the next one comes. But ultimately, all of those things are going to let us down if we don't have Christ as the foundation of our life. And so what does that look like? What does that look like for us, CSU 2023? How do we practically do that? How do we practically found our lives um, on Christ? And I, I want to leave you guys with this. This is the, the one thing if you were like, Mitch, I didn't hear a darn word you said. I tuned it all out. Well, tune back in for this next part, <laughs> and then you can tune right back out. But hear this. This is the, the way that we can build that foundation on Christ, and it's by this. It's, it's hearing God's word and doing God's word. Hear God's word and do God's word. That is how we build our lives on the foundation of Jesus. It's by hearing and doing God's word. And that's Jesus' main point here. If we go back to the very start of this passage, he starts it out by this. It's like, Everyone who hears my word and puts it into practice is like a wise man. And the one who doesn't do that is the foolish man. And so that's Jesus' main point here. The wise builder is one who is obedient out of their faith. Because of who Jesus is and what he's done, we trust him. And because of that trust, we, we live out the things that he calls us to do. And guys, I don't want to pretend that this isn't like easy to, to not do. You know, I, I'm very much a victim of... Uh, of doing the opposite. Like uh, in college, a lot of my, my time, I would just come to Stumo, uh, listen to it, and then leave like nothing happened. You know, that was a fun time with friends. That was a lot of times for me. Or going to Bible study, I would go in there, participate, but then as soon as it was time to leave, I just kind of left those applications at the table. And it still happens, right? Like I still experience this sometimes in my, in my daily time with God when I'm reading the Bible. You know, I'm in a rush, and so I, I don't want to sit and apply these things into my life. And I just check off the box of being spiritual. And so I want to say that, um, I want to encourage you guys not to leave it on the table. Don't leave it there. When we hear and apply God's word into our life, we are building on that foundation and building on what lasts. And so now I actually want to uh, invite my friend Maggie up to hear a little bit about what this has looked like in her life. So why don't you guys help me welcome up Maggie. Hi guys, my name is Maggie, as Mitch said. I'm a sophomore, I'm in Pi Phi, and I also just recently transferred from the University of Arizona. So growing up, my family went to church every Sunday, um, but church for me was more about just trying to stay awake throughout the whole thing. Um, I knew who God was, but that was about it. Um, fast forward to seventh grade, my parents got a divorce, and I felt so alone. Anxiety and overthinking started to consume my life. Every decision I would make in my life, I would spend hours overthinking it. And even after the decision was made, I was never satisfied with it. This even included my decision to go to the University of Arizona. All this is to say I had no firm foundation and I was making every decision in my life by myself. It wasn't until the summer before my freshman year that my sister Hannah shared the good news that God has for us. I had no idea that there was such thing as having a relationship with God and I had no idea how much this would change my life. After turning and trusting God, the anxiety in my life became less prominent. I realized that I didn't have to overthink every decision that I made because I trusted in the plan God had for me. This even included transferring schools. Transferring to CSU was the first decision I had ever made where I didn't have to overthink it. I can say for certain transferring was right for me because I made the decision with the help from God. God has provided me so much peace with transferring and I no longer have to make decisions by myself. I found that being built on God's word is the strongest foundation. A verse that stuck with me through my parents' divorce and even through transferring is Romans 8.28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. Thanks, guys. 
Awesome. Yeah, thank you, Maggie. That was awesome. <clears throat> guys, as we, as we wrap up, I want to ask you guys to think through this question. Think through this question for yourself. Uh, you don't have to share it with anybody, but think through how would you answer this in your life today? What is your foundation? What are you building your life on? What are you building your life on right now? Is it the temporary things of the world or are you taking steps to hear God's word and do God's word? I do want to encourage you guys, the fact that you're sitting in this room, hey, you're already halfway there, right? You're hearing God's word uh, and you're taking it in, but now it's a matter of as you guys leave, how are you going to respond? How are you going to respond to the things that, that have been presented before y'all, the things that Jesus asked those, those people on the side of that mountain 2,000 years ago? Are you going to respond? And, and Jesus poses the same things. Are we going to be people who just hear it and move on? Just go, let it go in one ear and out the other? Or are we going to be like the wise builder and hear it and apply it into our life? I want to help us do that by giving us a couple applications of, of what this could look like. And uh, again, these might seem simple, but there are great ways to take those initial steps. And again, if, if an, an initial step for you is, is making Jesus the Lord of your life, there's no better way to do that than to start tonight. Just take that step to hear God's word, approach him, and let him uh, come into your life and trust him as the Lord. As far as applications go, I would say this. The first one is, is start to read the Bible. Again, we have to be hearers and doers of God's word, so that takes knowing what God says. A great place to start is in Matthew or John like I said, we were just in the Sermon on the Mount, and it's one of my favorite like, chunks of Scripture to read because you really get a picture of what this actually looks like. Who is Jesus, and, and how did he approach these teachings? You get to see that for yourself. Uh, secondly, I would say bring others in. Bring others in to help. This is so hard to do alone, you know, and we're going to experience those hard things. And, I mean, man, I, I could not have done that. I could not have gone through that trial of losing my friend Liam had it not been for the faithful believers I had in my life. So have others in that are going to help you take those steps. Fortunately, you're in a room of like 200 people that are all trying to do the same thing within like a four-year span of each other. So that's awesome. Like you lean on each other. And we, us as staff, we would love to meet up with you guys, love to help you guys learn what that looks like to take those steps. And then lastly, guys, consider SMC. Um, again, we, we say this so much because it is just a, a profound experience and an amazing way that you can take those steps to grow in your walk with God. I was a sophomore in 2018 when I went for the first time. I, I wanted really nothing to do with religion, nothing to do with Christianity, but it was at SMC that I got to not only have so much fun, but I got to see that, hey, this is really possible and it's really important. You know, I'm not going to push this off, but take it seriously right now. And so with that, guys, building is fun and building our lives should be awesome. But it's so important that we consider what are we building our life on? What is our foundation? So I encourage all of you guys to take steps to be not only hearers, but doers of God's word and ultimately build your life on the things that last.